that is up to every member of this institution, Republican or Democrat, to make a clear and unambiguous statement that any attempt by this president to remove special counsel Mueller from his position or to pardon key witnesses in any effort to shield them for, from accountability or shut down the investigation would be a gross abuse of power and a flagrant violation of executive branch responsibilities and authorities. Welcome back to AM Joy. Even with the big gift of a giant Republican tax cut putting millions of dollars into his and his friends' pockets, Donald Trump still hasn't gotten the Christmas gift he wants the most because there's still no end in sight to the Russia investigation that Trump has been hoping would wrap up by the end of the year with what he has bragged will be a complete exoneration for him. Special Counsel Robert Mueller is still quietly chugging along, even as Trump allies in the media and the GOP continue their efforts to undermine the credibility of the investigation. Two U.S. officials told Bloomberg that Mueller is now setting his sights on Donald Trump Jr. and Jared Kushner, whose actions will be subject to close examination as the investigation wraps up in 2018. While lawmakers pursuing the Russia probe in the House are reportedly looking for answers from Stephen Bannon, Corey Lewandowski, and Trump's longtime assistant, Rona Graff. And joining me now is David Korn, Washington Bureau Chief for Mother Jones, MSNBC intelligence analyst Nabi Jamali, MSNBC contributor Malcolm Nance, Jill Weinbanks, former assistant Watergate special prosecutor, and former State Department senior advisor Nayara Hawk. And Jill, I'm going to come to you first. I want to play Elijah Cummings, the ranking member on the House Oversight and Government Re uh, Reform Committee, talking about what Republicans in the House are doing vis-a-vis -vis the Russia investigation. Whenever it seems as if Mueller is getting closer and closer to the White House, uh, it seems that we're distracted to something else. So now they've reached into their uh, book of playbook of uh, tricks, and now they're pulling this out uh, today. So we're prepared. And Jill, what he's talking about there is, among other things, a report in Politico this week that, uh, to, that, that says the following. A group of House Republicans has gathered secretly for weeks in the Capitol in an effort to build a case that senior leaders of the Justice Department and FBI improperly and perhaps criminally mishandled the contents of a dossier that describes alleged ties between Donald Trump and Russia. A subset of the Republican members of the House Intelligence Committee, led by Chairman Devin Nunes of California, has been quietly working parallel to the committee's high-profile inquiry inquiry into Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election. They haven't informed Democrats about their plans, but they have consulted with the House's general counsel. This is a modern day version of the committee to protect the president, is it not? It is, and it is shameful. I long for the days of bipartisan cooperation, which is sorely lacking in this investigation. The fact that Democrats are being excluded is ridiculous. And also, the thought that the FBI mishandled the dossier is equally ridiculous. As is always the case, when the FBI gets any kind of tip or information that has any credibility, they will investigate it. And the author of this dossier was a well-known and well-regarded, accepted source of information. He had been with British intelligence. He was respected. And so, of course, it made sense that if he came up with some information, it would be investigated. So this is a very troubling scene, as is the fact that investigation is continuing um, in New York instead of in D.C., that it's in private, yeah. not in public. These are troubling signs of a lack of cooperation and an effort to protect the president at all costs. Yeah, and that, that interviews uh, uh, Naveed Jamali of uh, witnesses to, in New York where Democrats are not being able to travel and come in. These, doing these things in secret is troubling. But also troubling is this, is this fact. I'm going to come to Naveed on this. Um, there are three people who reportedly can corroborate and vouch for for Jim Comey's testimony that he was told by Donald Trump, he was asked by Donald Trump to give a loyalty pledge to him, and that he was also asked by Donald Trump to go easy on or to curtail the investigation into Michael Flynn. There are three senior FBI officials he told contemporaneously, and they are named uh, Mr. McCabe, Mr. Rybicki, and Baker. Um, and they are all lawyers who work inside uh, the FBI. Uh, NBC News uh, it is reporting that a source familiar to with McCabe's testimony before the Intelligence Committee told NBC News that McCabe confirmed that the that Comey told him that that he asked for a loyalty pledge from him. We've since seen 
uh, and my producer have to give me his first name, that Mr. Baker has been reassigned. I believe it's Mr. James Baker has been reassigned since then. You had Donald Trump in the past asking for Andrew McCabe, who was the acting FBI director after Comey was fired, calling for him to be fired in a tweet that he issued on the same day of the raid of Paul Manafort's apartments. And so you're starting to see retaliation against these three people, Andrew McCabe, Mr. Baker, Mr. Rybicki, I mean, presumably because they can corroborate Comey. What do you make of that? I think that's exactly right, Joy. I think that this is retaliation. It's meant to send a chilling message. And the reality, Joy, is despite what the Republicans are doing, in spite of what the president is tweeting out, this is not going to change the velocity of the investigation, right? The investigation is not Bob Mueller. The investigation is the Russia investigation. It's not one person that's leading this. Um, this, you know, you can replace people, and as long as you don't touch the investigation, it's not going to have an impact. What the Republicans are doing, let's be honest, is they are attempting to sully the good name of these people in the hopes that the fruits of the investigation um, will be then sullied in, in exchange of that. So it's, it's a tactic to just, you know, pre, you know, premeditate sort of the results here, to sort of say that because these people have questionable uh, loyalty or biases, that, that as a result the investigation in, in and of itself is biased. And it won't work. I mean, it just won't work. And look, just one last thing with that. You know, I, I sort of feel very frustrated as we go down the road here. The whole context of this is Russia. We've looked, we have three investigations going. We have talked, uh, both the investigators have spoken to numerous people. I can't imagine how much money they spent. The only person that does not seem to be part of the nexus of any of the investigations, at least publicly, is Vladimir Putin. We've forgotten the context of this is Russia, that Russia started something here, that they did something against the democracy of our country. And that seems to be something the Republicans don't want to admit. That's a national security thing. That's not a partisan thing. So as we go down to these really into the weeds here, we forget the Russia part of it. And I, and I just don't understand why that doesn't seem to be part of the narrative. Well, well, Malcolm, I think the reason it's not part of the narrative is that re Republicans understand that the closer you get to the truth of what Russia did, the closer you get to the fact that the likelihood that they assisted in the election of this president. And they are mainly concerned with protecting Donald Trump and making sure that his legitimacy is not questioned and that his election is not questioned. But in your view, can they actually pull off that protection if we're now having having conversations about Kushner, about Donald Jr., about these meetings in Trump Tower that were supposedly about adoption. I mean, it is getting closer to the president. Right. And you have to be living in a hermetically sealed bubble to believe that the FBI is not looking at every aspect of this investigation. I think that there, that there actually is a group within the Congress, and we know uh, Congressman Jim Jer Jordan this last week who made a blistering attack against the FBI, <laughs> essentially encouraging the Trump administration to disband the FBI to rebuild it, which Donald Trump himself asserted. These people think that they can get past this thing by destroying the investigatory branches of government. And all that's going to do with guys like McCabe, guys like Mueller, uh, is make them and their deputies all the more determined to get to the bottom of this. So, you know, you know, I actually tweeted towards uh, Congressman Jordan that it's still obstruction of justice and a criminal act if you try to stop an investigation, even if you think that it's political, you know, it's, it's, it's a political witch hunt. There are still laws here that can be broken, and anyone that tries to stop the investigation is culpable. And, and, you know, Nair, we now, um, you know, have this broadening not only into the Trump circle, but into the uh, wider campaign. You have Jill Stein now coming under some scrutiny as well. This is Mark Warner, Senator Mark Warner, uh, talking about that aspect of the investigation. Ms. Stein was at the infamous dinner that included my General Flynn and uh, uh, Vladimir Putin. And we do know that she's had very complimentary things to say about Julian Assange, who clearly was being used by the Russians uh, to take some of the hacked information and release into our political system. And, and, you know, among the things that we don't see Republicans uh, expressing concern about is the fact you still have Julian Assange out there in that embassy mm -hmm. in uh, Britain, in the uh, embassy uh, hiding out. Um, you still have WikiLeaks that is active. Do you see any signs that Republicans are concerned that those entities, which Mark Warner said were active potentially in the Jill Stein campaign, that those things could still be active? We have another election coming up. 
I think we're seeing, especially after this last week on the domestic front, that Republicans in Congress are far more concerned about their own personal political wins than they are about anything dealing with national security. What the FBI is involved with right now is making sure that no one is above the law. That means the president and his family. Even broader than that, though, on the national security side, the FBI is conducting what is now becoming the most important counterintelligence counter operation in our country right now. The FBI is trying to get to the bottom of how the Russians were able to not only infiltrate the highest levels of a presidential campaign, but fundamentally get assets to influence policies related to sanctions, related to banks, related to Putin's pockets. It is a very di pretty direct connection uh, when you look at it in terms of the policies that have been implemented and the Trump fawning over Putin, particularly in the last uh, week, two phone calls that he made, essentially to congratulate Putin uh, with without even once mentioning that there's an election meddling or election concerns. If we look at this as a counterintelligence operation, that will certainly help, I think, uh, give the FBI the support it needs. But that support will have to come from the American public. It is not coming from Republicans in Congress. And, and David Corn, I want to come to you. Jill Weinbanks mentioned earlier the dossier, which is what a lot mm. of Republicans are hanging their hat on and trying to say the, you know, that the origins and the financing of it are their smoking gun to say that this entire mm. Russiagate investigation is is a fraud. Um, your name came up uh, in a political investigation because now Republicans are trying to say that because an FBI official who's linked uh, in some way to that dossier spoke to you, that somehow that proves, I don't know what they're trying to say, that you and this well, FBI well, official cooked it up. Tell us what is, what is the allegation being made and uh, what is your take? The big picture here is that this is part of the smear. They have this conspiracy theory that somehow, you know, Democrats who paid for the research that went into the memos, which is true, that the memos themselves triggered the FBI um, investigation, and therefore this was all kind of a hoax from the beginning. And because they say the memos are nothing but trash, which is not true, it shows that this investigation has been poisoned from the start, and so there's no reason to give it any credence. Now, the memos themselves are not what triggered the, the FBI investigation, so they're wrong on that account. But also, they're trying, in this instance, they're trying to show that the FBI was out there to, you know, to basically get Trump, and by circulating these, these memos to reporters such as myself, and they focused on Jim Baker, who was the general counsel, was the general counsel of the FBI, and he was a fellow I know. He's a social acquaintance, and I do have contact with him. And they're trying to say that he somehow gave me the memos and that was part of the FBI operation to get Donald Trump. I've said to, you know, listen, I'm a reporter. We usually don't like to talk about our sourcing sure. on any story. But um, in this case, I made an exception and I gave a statement to Politico and I said James Baker was not my source for this. And even so, Politico puts out the story and now the, you know, the Republicans are trying to investigate this link between Baker and me to sort of indicate the FBI was playing games with the memo rather than looking at it as uh, was said a moment ago as a piece of information that deserved evaluation. And it is really pretty, but, mm -hmm. but what they're doing too is, excuse me for going on too long here, That's okay. it's complicated, is that Jim Baker and, J and Jim Comey tweeted this out this morning, has been a public servant for 25 years working on national security and counterterrorism issues. I know how much he's lost sleep protecting people like you and me, and they're just smearing him like they're smearing everybody else because all that matters is protecting Trump and not getting at the bottom of this, as Navid said, and focusing on what Russia did. And Jill, just really quickly, the, the fact that they are now, you know, as David Korn said, smearing Jim Baker, the fact that you've seen reassignments of the three witnesses that could uh, corroborate Jim Comey's testimony, is that, from your legal you know, POV, is that obstruction? It could be obstruction. Of course, it depends on the intent with which it was done. Um, and I want to add to something that Malcolm said in terms of defining what obstruction is. So, for example, we're now focusing on did the president know that Flynn had lied to the FBI and that's why he fired him? It doesn't matter. If he knew that he was guilty, he, the president, has something to hide and is trying to kill the investigation, that's obstruction of justice. It doesn't matter whether he 
did this because he knew Flynn had lied or not. He just wanted to stop the investigation. And so we have to be careful when we talk about what obstruction is and what conspiracy mm -hmm. is and be clear that it's far broader than what the Republicans are trying to define it as. And Malcolm, is there any in innocent explanation for why a president of the United States would want the FBI to stop investigating Michael Flynn, given Michael Flynn's foreign business ties, right up until Inauguration Day when he was texting his Turkish contacts? No, absolutely not. I mean, if, if, he, if any normal president of the United States, and of course I use that term loosely, uh, we're not in a normal world, any normal president of the United States would be panicked due to the political impact that would fall out of a, his national security advisor having promised to abduct a U.S. resident and move them over to Turkey for cash, uh, working with uh, Russian resources to build nuclear power plants behind his back. Any president would have started their own investigation, would have immediately resolved this issue. Donald Trump has spent every minute trying to stop anyone looking into this because, obviously, something is behind it that is much broader than just even saying the word Russia. Yeah. It's a question of Americans in conspiracy with Russia. And, and Naveed, is the FBI, you've worked with the FBI, you've been a double agent with the FBI, is, do you buy the idea that the FBI was in leagues to uh, essentially pl plot a coup against Donald Trump? Absolutely not. It's crazy. And, and Joy, I mean, it's so frustrating because this isn't just about Trump. It's about Russia. And it's not just about Russia, right? I mean, right now, the United States is losing. I, I can't emphasize that enough. Yeah. Russia was successful in 2016. They're successful today. I mean, this idea they're coming back in 2018, I'm not sure they ever left. And I have to tell you that our other adversaries are looking at this and seeing how effective this was. China, Iran, North Korea, all these other countries are realizing, my goodness, look at what Russia did. Look at what we can do. And until we acknowledge that Russia did something and what they actually did, until the Democrats also get behind this and kind of come out here and show the American public what they did. Look, President Obama threw out 30 Russian intelligence officers yep. right before we left office. We need to talk about that. Until that's acknowledged, um, our en enemies, our adversaries, are only going to be emboldened, and they're going to be back here, and they're going to keep doing what they're doing, and we should all be incredibly worried about yep. that. And David Corden, last word to you. Is the dossier, the now infamous dossier that's formed a lot of the core of some of this investigation, is it merely a political document opposed to Donald Trump, or in your view, is it evidence of collusion? Well, let me say, I don't think it is the core of a lot of the investigation. There are intelligence intercepts. There was interest in Paul Manafort and Carter Page and their connections mm -hmm. with Russia that were, I think that predate the, um, the, the dossier. So I don't think, I think they're trying to make it the core because right. they think they can discredit it. So that's the thing. The, doss the memos, I like to call them memos, are just one of many pieces of evidence that got the FBI's counterintelligence people worried and gave them a bit of a roadmap and places to look at. And the fact that they're still at it now over a year later shows that there's a, there, there is some there there at least to be examined. It's not based on what Christopher David Steele gave them. Yeah, absolutely. David Korn, Naveed Jamali, Malcolm Nance, Jill Weinbanks, thank you all, and Nayara Hawk will be back. Thank you, guys. Happy holidays. No and up next, Uranium One and Hillary Clinton. Not a thing. But Donald Trump sure would like to make it one. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.